All right, my friends, it's time for another Rolling Rambles. And this time, first of all, why the different angle? Because some people had concerns about safety and wanted to be able to see where I'm looking. Well, I've given you a, uh, well, first of all, this is not the super duper wide lens. It's still technically an ultra wide lens, but it's not near fisheye. So this is straightforward. This is my mirror. That is my side mirror. That is my other side mirror and traffic could be anywhere, so I'm just gonna do this the whole time. All right, that makes me sick, and we're not doing that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna follow up on the VPN issue because quite a few people noticed a few things I left out, and I feel kind of silly for leaving them out, and I don't wanna just leave a bunch of comments discussing it when I could just make another video. Hey man, it's free content, free content. Um, right before this, by the way, I recorded a behind the scenes on how I set up this whole thing uh, on a more technical level. So if you want to replicate this extremely dangerous roll and ramble setup, yeah, you're, you know, you got what you need. It'll be in another video. Now back to the VPN issue. A few people noticed I left out some other uses besides piracy that are actually useful. And they're right. Geolocation is a big one. The really annoying thing about geolocation of IP addresses is it's wrong. <clears throat> the whole geolocation of an IP thing basically just means there's a database of what data centers in any, are, are for any given IP range, um, what data centers the traffic goes out of. So, for example, I both live and work in Siler City, North Carolina, but my internet service tends to go out of a data center in Lillington or somewhere in that area. Um, Lillington has come up. Other, other places have come up. But Lillington is actually where it thinks I am. I am not in Lillington. Lillington is like an hour away from me. It, it's nowhere near me. A lot of people <clears throat> who have the DSL in my area, which I think is bright speed, which is trash, um, all DSLs trash, let's just be honest here. Um, but a lot of people with the DSL service in my area, it thinks that they are in Atlanta, Georgia. Because apparently everything gets shoved on a huge backbone and goes down to Atlanta, Georgia before being sent across the country or the world. And because of that, well, they're in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, that's a little bit annoying when it thinks you're in Atlanta because there are some things that will use geolocation to figure out if you're, for example, in a state or country. There are other things that will use geolocation to decide whether or not you are out of the area that they service um, or just to auto configure things based on your supposed location. And that guy's got his high beams on and it's really pissing me off. Anyway, now that I'm blind, um, IP geolocation is stupid. The thing is, it, it's probably reasonable to assume that an IP range assigned to the United States of America is probably somebody in the United States of America. But the thing is, I use VPNs sometimes I can make my traffic look like it's coming from anywhere in the world, almost. So, how do you know? I mean, there, yes, there are a lot of services that exclude VPN ranges because VPN IP address ranges are actually well-known and publicly available lists. It, they're not a secret. You know, your VPN's IP, you know, everybody knows, if they want to know, that the VPN IP address what is going on in front of me? Why are we suddenly slowing down? Holy crap. <coughs> I love driving, don't you? The VPN IP address. Um, God, what was I saying? I got derailed by this genius in front of me. Um, okay, and the VPN IP address is publicly known. If you go to 4chan or something, they know you're on a VPN. If you go to any website with Cloudflare protection, Cloudflare knows that you're on a VPN. So since VPNs are used to hide people's um, actual source IP address, it's assumed that VPN traffic is higher risk 
So you might notice you get a metric ton of CAPTCHAs, Cloudflare ones, Google ones, HCAPTCHA, you name it. But you might notice a lot more IP address validation. You might notice that some websites simply say that they won't serve you, period. Like, oh, you're banned or whatever. And there's a good reason for this, because you're on a VPN and they know it. And maybe, maybe that website does not want you to access them using a VPN. So, yes. God, my congestion is killing me. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, using a VPN can get around geo-blocking. Um, you know what? I don't really have much of a choice. I can't keep talking. I'm going to die. You're going to have to... Uh, endure me blowing my nose. I'm sorry. <sighs> because I cannot talk. <clears throat> At this point, I think it's the pollen that's messing me up. We have so much pollen, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, you can get around some geo-blocking with VPNs, but the thing is, if Netflix really wants to, they can see you're using a VPN and they can block you. Um, and don't think just because you use a smaller VPN that somehow you'll get around it. Maybe, maybe not. But it's only a matter of time. It won't work forever. VPN IP addresses are not exactly uh, unknown. <coughs> now, one thing that the VPN stuff is really good at as far as the whole geo-blocking thing... A lot of states in the United States are starting to pass really stupid adult site age verification laws, which frankly is a violation of the First Amendment, but, you know, governments don't care, so does it really matter? You can get around this by using a VPN to make your IP literally anything other than the state that you're in that has the block or another state that has the block. Um, just, just say you're in California and everything's fine, I guess. So there's that option, which is great. It got dark quick, didn't it? Yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. So, yeah, tell them you're in California, where where, ever, where all the porn comes from, and you'll be fine. You can, you can look at all your adult websites all day long. Or, if you don't feel like dealing with a VPN, you could just use a website like ePorner that just doesn't care, um, that really doesn't care about the laws or whatever, and they'll just do whatever they want and not try to fight anybody on it because they don't care. Uh, so there you go. There's your, there's your how to get naked ladies on the internet without the prudes in your government stopping you. Tip for the day. Um, another, a couple of other people were like, oh, I do need a VPN because it keeps me private. Well, all of my arguments do, in fact, <coughs> assuming you're web browsing, do, in fact, negate your little points about how if you use a VPN it does make you private. No. No it doesn't. Not unless you're blocking Canvas and cookies and and JavaScript and um, you know stored payment methods and your font lists and all the other browser fingerprinting methods. You can say that it protects you all you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, someone mentioned multi-hop. VPN multi-hop. Because I had mentioned WireGuard and they were like you can't do multi-hop with WireGuard. Okay. What does multi-hop do? I don't actually know because I didn't look into it. I didn't look into it to figure out what they're talking about, but I can make an assumption based on VPNs. I'm assuming that you're not talking about the um, VPN chaining, but maybe you are. Uh, but let, let's assume that that's the case. Let's assume by multi-hop you mean you VPN, and then that VPN VPNs to another VPN. You just got like a Matroska egg of, of freaking VPNs. And that way it... it further obfuscates. Okay, cool. So if you VPN somewhere and then that somewhere communicates with the website, yes, somebody can go and try to like look at the traffic and be like, oh, the, you know, this traffic here and that traffic there, we can do a correlation. Uh, maybe we can assume that the traffic here came from this guy for, for realses. <coughs> uh, maybe. All multi-hop would do then, you know, is bounce it through two VPNs. So now they have to double check. Like, they have to double correlate. Okay, maybe it does add a layer of security. How much security? Who knows? Um, when you do your multi-hop and you, and you have those browser cookies turned on and relaying um, a, the personal token that the ad network gives you or whatever, 
you know, through both hops, through both VPNs. Um, okay, good for you. You've, you've managed to uh, not really change anything, huh? That, that kind of sucks. Man, it's getting dark quick. <clears throat> so the whole multi-hop idea, I don't know about that. Uh, what was the other thing? I don't remember. Uh, but those are, the, those are the main things that came up. Um, to do the VPN thing for actual privacy, frankly, you would kind of need to use a mutable virtual machine setup where you have a VM and the contents of that VM are temporary, like they're stored in a temporary snapshot that's lost when you kill the VM so that it loses everything. But even then, you know, you still have the potential to track um, across the same session. So, yeah. Anyway, privacy is very difficult. Security is very difficult. To get it right is very difficult. <clears throat> it's, this is not the olden days. You, you can't just be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to not, like, I'm, I'm just going to turn off cookies and JavaScript and I'm good to go. There are so many ways to fingerprint a browser. It's, it's honestly a little absurd. And if you're not using a browser, if it's other traffic you're trying to obfuscate, fair enough. One person asked me something about UDP versus TCP. That really has nothing to do with the encryption side of things or the privacy side of things. That is a technical issue. Um, look up TCP over TCP. Because there's a problem where TCP has an expanding uh, retry where if something doesn't work, um, it does it again but waits a little longer. And the problem is if the retry windows on the encapsulating TCP, um, they basically end up um, causing the encapsulated TCP to miss because now the retries are not going out at the same time and the retries are failing because one's doing a retry, but the other one's also doing a different retry. The intervals are different and it triggers timeouts. And these TCP over TCP has serious issues. They're very well known and documented. So to tunnel any kind of traffic, you at a minimum should be using UDP. Although that is not 100% true, that's tunneling traffic at a low level, like if you're actually tunneling the raw TCP data. If you are tunneling um, the stream, if you're actually receiving the TCP, breaking it down into the communication stream that is in it, in that TCP session, then making another TCP session on the other end, which is what SSH does if you do SSH tunneling, um, and you talk to the forwarded ports, you're sending the data to the SSH server, and then the server unpacks that data from the whole TCP structure and then repacks it in a whole new session to the actual target client and vice versa. So all the TCP stuff's being rewritten. You, so you can, quote, tunnel TCP over TCP if it's doing it at, at a different layer that removes the original TCP stuff entirely. That was a little bit of a tangent, but it's something that came up. It's something that maybe some people might be misled on. Um, I just want it to be clear. You can't tunnel TCP over TCP because they will fight each other and you will have timeouts like crazy at some point. It just kind of breaks down. It doesn't work very well. Um, that might have gotten a little too technical. I'm sorry. But yeah, um, the thing is, consumer VPN is still largely useless unless you're pirating and don't want your ISP or anything that you need just your ISP, your actual ISP to be cloaked so that it's not really easy to send a DMCA takedown or otherwise like go after you. One guy had his game server get DDoSed, so he'd put it behind a VPN and I, I don't know exactly how his setup worked, but I could understand that. Hide your actual source IP so that people can't DDoS the source, they can DDoS the VPN IP, but then you just switch IPs and you're good to go again. They can't just keep repeatedly DDoSing you at home. <clears throat> so if you need to cloak your ISP for, for technical reasons um, to keep bottom of the barrel really easy attacks um, that are also not common. I mean, like, 
people DDoSing random game servers is probably not that common, but I'm sure it happens enough if it's big enough. Um, likewise, the whole piracy thing, you know, it depends on what you're pirating. If you're pirating small independent films, chances are that a small independent film group or um, small music label is not trolling around trying to pull DMCA takedown crap by looking at tracker lists. So maybe you're fine there, but you know, you, you don't want to deal with it, so you use a VPN to hide the source IP so they don't know who to send the notice to. Just makes your life easier. But it doesn't protect you. I mean, not not necessarily. Um, they, so just keep that in mind. It's the only thing it really does is mask your source IP. But if you're using a web browser or any protocol that carries identifying information, it is going to carry it. So masking your ISP for certain a certain limited set of not generally web browsing applications. Um, and geolocation restrictions, and I mean, there's there's not really that much else, frankly, um, that you, that makes a VPN worth it. VPNs, and and one person had a very good, um, like I guess I want to say overview or observation that I'm actually talking more about the problems with VPN marketing or mismarketing than I am about VPNs just by themselves. People have been told that VPNs are this great privacy tool, but they don't understand what it actually does. And there's no point in, a, in having a VPN to get on the internet if you don't understand what it is, how it works generally, and how the VPN can be pierced. What the hell is the point of having a VPN so that you can log into your the same Facebook account again through the VPN, I mean, Facebook still knows who you are. Anybody who subpoenas Facebook for your account stuff can see that it, you know, your login session was at this VPN IP, and it can actually uncloak any other traffic at that IP <coughs> that you might have been engaged in, or at least to some extent uncloak it, because it proves you were logged into the VPN and given that VPN IP address at that time. So it can reduce the, the security of your non-web browsing traffic if you're using a web browser over the same VPN. You need to understand it or there's no point in using it. It's just a waste of time. It does not automatically, it's not a privacy magic bullet. It doesn't just magically make you super duper private, cover your ass on the internet. It just doesn't do that. And there are even conspiracy theories that VPNs are also a um, you know a big tech government conspiracy where you know oh they're just using that to track you too and it's true a VPN account you are taking your traffic from your source IP at home or whatever and instead of having the plausible deniability well it could have been anybody that can get on my Wi-Fi or whatever <clears throat> someone who had my Wi-Fi password could have drove up and used it when I wasn't looking instead of that it's like well how did some guy just randomly show up in front of your house and, you know, that had your password to your Wi-Fi? Um, you know, I, no, we know that it's your VPN account. What do you say? Are, you had to have given the credentials to somebody at some point. It's way stronger proof if it's your VPN account tied to it. It's way stronger proof that you actually were the one doing that connection, like you were actually the one involved. Because it's your VPN account. It's not your ISP account. An IP address does not tie to a person, but a VPN account sure does. You better hope the no logs thing is true. And how do you know that it's true? It's a good question, isn't it? I hope that that clears up some of the VPN stuff, the, the comments and the discussion that was had after I posted my original VPN ramble saying that they were largely useless. Hold on, what is this guy doing? Yeah, okay. So one of the problems with doing this is that I'm driving. What are you doing, weirdo? I can't deal with this shit. Hold on.
Why are you in the fast lane if you're going to go 30 miles an hour, bro? Doesn't make any sense at all. I just don't understand. Why are you in the fast lane? All right. Such is the hazard of doing a rolling show. Anyway, enough of this. Let me know if there's anything else I missed. If, you know, if I left something out, if you have any additional thoughts, feel free to leave more comments. Keep in mind that unless you say something particularly dumb, I mean really dumb, it's not me censoring you, it's probably YouTube. Um, I did have one of my commenters today try to have a discussion, and I could see m parts of the comments in studio. It wouldn't let me expand them, but it wouldn't let me see it anywhere else. I could only see it in the YouTube studio app on my phone. So that went really well. It wasn't me censoring. It was damn YouTube. What am I supposed to do, man? I, I have everything set to don't hold messages, don't censor content, and yet here we are censoring content. Thanks, YouTube. Can't talk about anything with anyone because of you. All right. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Take care.